bright sunshiny day. Hi everybody, good day to you. Welcome to this wonderfully sunshiny bright Florida day we've got going on here. Headed back to the shop. Uh, I'm gonna try to do some work on actual cars this week. I've got a uh, Ford Transit. It's got a leaking CV axle seal. I'm headed in to go get that replaced today. Uh, I'm trying to squeeze it in amidst all the demolition and deconstruction that's going on in the shop. I uh, got a lot of stuff torn down. The place was an absolute wreck. Uh, spent pretty much all day yesterday recovering from the first two days of demolition, uh, as well as trying to clean up the mess and organize the place so I can actually work again. Because I, uh, I cannot repair cars amidst a pile of rubble. It just does not work that way, unfortunately. So yeah, I kind of feel like I'm out of business this week. Uh, I spent the first two days tearing stuff down, spent the next day cleaning stuff up, uh, today, I think it's day four, it's Thursday of the week, yeah. And uh, I'm just trying to trying to get all this stuff back together. Man, it's getting a little rough out here. I'm, I'm kind of glad I filled up my auxiliary fuel tank in the back. I added a, that's an extra 800 pounds back there and this is definitely a low traction day. So I'm, I'm glad to have the extra weight. Yeah, see the issue with the dually in the rain is there's twice as much surface area on the rear axle, which means there's less pressure being placed on the road surface from the tires and the axle and so you're more prone to slippages in low traction conditions. One would think that twice as many tires gives you twice as much traction and that's kind of true up until a point but uh, in a low traction situation like water uh, that, uh, that can actually work against you having the extra tire. That's why a lot of the off-road guys uh, like the mud, the mud uh, uh, what do you call them, like the mud riding guys, they uh, they run skinny tractor tires instead of big wide fat tires because the big wide fat tires will just sit there and slip but the skinnier tractor tires they'll dig into whatever uh whatever they're driving on and give you a little bit more traction so uh sometimes less is more yeah there's a lot of water going on here you see the folks in the middle lane over there they are uh they're kind of throwing a wake that van up there was spewing a bunch of water out earlier flood waters yeah it's an undercar pressure washing system. Top an easy hood. Yeah. All righty, back at the shop. I got the joint opened up. The rain has subsided. Let's go out and fetch that transit van and see what's going on with this uh, leaking axle seal. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, I do believe we're gonna do a brake fluid exchange on this also, that was requested. We're working on the New View Flooring Incorporated van. This is a local flooring company. Shout out to them. Thanks, Lawrence, for bringing us the van. Not sponsored. I just feel like, as a local business, I should support other local businesses. Anyway, this 13 Transit van has 121,810 miles on the odometer. Starting the engine. Ring. Ooh. I hear a power steering noise. Hear that? That was fast. That's not what it's here for, but I'm gonna go ahead and look into that. Hmm, got some brake fluid. We're gonna need a little bit more than that to do a brake fluid exchange though. And what else do we got here? Looks like we got our uh, output shaft seal. Definitely a Ford part, this is good. Motocraft. Part number three, Sierra 4 Zulu, 1177 Alpha Alpha. You can't see, it's a little dark. That's the, I believe the CV shaft output seal that goes in the transmission, transaxle. Backing out the auto. Now, I do believe that this axle is kind of a bear to remove, but uh, there could be a shortcut that I'm gonna try to employ. I was talking to A-Rod from Power Stroke Tech Talk last night, and uh, he's a, it was after the live stream, and uh, he's a Ford tech, he's done plenty of these things, and he told me there might be a cheat to uh, get through this a little faster than normal. So I'm gonna see if I cannot employ said cheat uh, during this operation. Let's get this thing racked up. You see we're going straight in on the uh, on the little rack. Parking Ziaco, powering down. <laughs> now, I remember from my last little transit that there is no popping of the hood down here. We have to use the ignition key to open the hood. It's a uh, it's a transit thing. We pull up the little blue oval where they circle their problems. There we go. 
That's how we pop the hood. Half of it. Where's the other half? And I'm over here fiddling around trying to find the release and I didn't read the directions again. I only remembered half of this. You turn it once that way, turn it twice that way. And it's, it's not working. Hmm. Oh, there we, oh, I just gotta pull up on it. Okay, now I remember. So what do we have here? 2.4, no, nope, two liters. Two liters of four cylinder, four power. Now, if all goes well with this, this is gonna be the first car that I get to use my BG PF7 brake fluid exchange machine on, and that's really cool. But before we get into the maintenance stuff, I wanna do the repair action. So uh, let's go ahead and see what I can do about that axle seal. Let's see what our brake fluid condition is looking like in there. Yeah, green. That's super green. Yeah, there's some corrosion going on in there. It's not good. Let's also take a peek at this uh, power steering fluid. See why we're making noise? Because it's low. Okay, I'm gonna look for a leak while this is up in the air. Ooh, what if it doesn't have an axle shaft leak? What if it has a power steering leak? And that's, that's our issue. I might want to check that first before I start pulling axles out of this thing. See right there. All right, moving on up. Black subscribe button. We have lift contact. Let's just double check everybody, make sure we're nice and safe. Looking good. That one's good. That one's good, all right. You know, I might need new view flooring to, uh, to fix this concrete after I destroy it later on. He's the concrete guy. I don't like doing concrete work. Not in Forte. Need some lights in here too. Actually, I, I've got two more outside. Same as these uh, big LEDs right here, so I can add 60,000 newmans to this area. <clears throat> Maybe a skylight or two would uh, also be beneficial. I do need more natural light in here. The, uh, the comments and the viewers have indicated such things to me. Okie dokes. Let's go down below and take a peek at her nether regions. Uh, first thing we'll notice is there's an absence of a skid shield, and that's really cool. It's less stuff for me to have to remove. But we're not looking for that, we're looking for fluid. There's some. That's red also. Eh, maybe it is a, a seal leak. Yeah, look at that. Let's see if I can't smell it. No, I can't really smell what it is, but that definitely looks like transmission fluid. My, uh, my sense of smell is not very keen these days. It's a post-COVID side effect. They got me. Well, this is odd. I don't really see like a power steering leak. The, uh, the steering gear looks good. There's no, uh, no fluid coming out of the boot. Uh, the lines look okay. I wonder where the fluid went. Hmm, odd. Well, either way, let's go ahead and pull this wheel off and get started on, uh, on this axle removal. We've got to pull the outer shaft and then we have to pull this inner shaft right here and that will allow me to pluck this uh, seal out and then drop the new seal in. Okie dokes, I'm gonna let this down to a more manageable height and we'll get started. Come down. Alrighty, first things first, let's pull the wheel. Get into this thing right here. So far, so good. This is good. Okay, let's see what we have going on here. We've got to pull the CV axle out, so we've got to lose the axle nut. And what I'm thinking is I'll just pop this ball joint loose, and then I should be able to just swing this entire strut and knuckle assembly away while simultaneously pushing the axle through the bearing, and I should just be able to pull it right out. Yeah, that, that looks easy enough. Let's try that first. Well, there's our first flashlight right. down. So we'll pull out our cotter pin. Don't need that anymore. Looks like a, let's try a 21. Oh, I grabbed the wrong socket. And it's a 22, so we're good to go. Unclicks. Put that back some real quick to protect the threads. Right there. Okay, what I need to do, we'll go in here with this uh, tie rod puller. It's gonna push up on this stud and we're going to try to push the stud out of its uh, home in the control arm here. Let's back up a little bit so we can see. Okie dokes. Yeah, let's see if this is going to come out of here easily or not.
Well, that was easy. Came right out. Okay, well, I did not think that was gonna come out that easily. But I've been uh, known to be wrong before, once or twice. But just the first time. Woo, that was a finger smacker moment. Oopsie. Get that back where it goes. All right, axle nut is next in the chopping block. That's gonna take 32 millimeters of socket. Loud noises. Uh, no. Serious? Thing's on there. Okay, well, it looks like this is gonna take some elbow grease. I'm gonna take, uh, maybe not elbow grease. I don't, I don't need any grease. I'm gonna do this manually. Take that chisel and put that in the slots of the rotor to hold the rotor. And I'll try to break this loose with a ratchet. Yeah, it is gonna take some elbows. Mine. Oh, Unclick. Oh, what? Okay, that's not happening. We need more leverage. I'm gonna slide this ball joint back in to hold the spindle knuckle. And then I can put uh, a little bit better leverage on this. Ooh, don't pinch my fingers off. Get in there again, please. Love my job so much, I'd do it twice. All right, let's back up some. We're gonna need some space. This is where you guys get a, you re out on me for a breaker bar. So I'm gonna do this with my ratchet. The problem is, is I've broken all my breaker bars doing this, but what I have not broken is uh, it's my ratchet. Many, many foot pounds of reverse kicks. There we go. Woo, buddy. Look at that thing. All right, that's loose. Kind of. Yeah, that was easy. Okay, I'm going to thread that nut back on to protect the threads. Axle went through, no problem. The compressor's still going. I don't need it, but I'll let it refill. I'm sure I'll need it later. Perfect. Okay, one more time with that ball joint. Let's get that thing apart again. And I should be able to push this axle through pull this uh, strut and knuckle assembly out of the way and then extract the axle. Should. Here it comes. Yep. Perfect. Ew. All right, let's scooch in a little bit closer to our intermediate shaft and we can remove this outer shaft from the intermediate shaft and then we'll pull the brackets off. So what I'll do, I'll just get right behind this thing and just kind of pry on it and it should pop that axle right out of position. There's one slip. There's two slips. Is it gonna come out? Or is this uh, not a two piece? This might not be a two piece. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, change the plans yet again. Uh, rather than fighting with that because it didn't uh, seem to want to come out with these I'll just go ahead and unbolt it And we'll take the intermediate shaft out uh, at the same time as that outboard shaft I've learned to not fight the universe It always wins Neutral drop. Oh, Come here nut Come here No nut gravity not right now It's okay, that wasn't the nut. That was the bracket. Okay, that's loose and it should slide out. Yep, it's gonna come out and the axle's gonna, or the intermediate shaft is gonna come with it. Whoa! Oh, he got me! Oh, that's so bad. A little failure, trans fluid failure. I was under it when it let go. It's on my leg. Not cool. 
Glad I bought uniforms. Now I have a change of clothes here. Hang on, I'll be right back. There. Okay, crisis averted. Look, I'm shiny again. Got new duds. There. Yeah, that was that was gross. L look at that. That was that was running down my leg. That is not cool. I didn't, I knew I knew better than to do that. Rookie mistake. Hang on. Let's undo what I just did to myself. Fluid's in good shape though. Nice color. There's always a bonus here. There. All right, let's uh, let's try this again without dumping uh, fluid all over me. Take two axle extraction. Let's roll this guy down here to catch all my droppings. So again, I'll I'll just pry this axle out ever so slightly until it uh, departs from the transmission, and then uh, we can pop that seal out and then drive our new one. Yeah, look at that. Ah, oh, got on me again. Come on. Come on. What is this? Not my day. It is my first day. I don't know what I'm doing. I've been uh, been out of business for like a week, I'm trying to get back into the swing of things here. You know. Okay. Let's see what I can't do about getting this seal out of here. I've, I've got a seal remover. Uh, many of you are aware that I like to just use pry bars, but you get mad at me for that. So we're gonna try the seal remover this time. See how it does. As you can see, there's not much uh, working space in there. I can't really get a good angle into it either. Mm, pry bar. That's how we're gonna do this. This is why I like pry bars. To remove gravity. To remove seals. So I can get into it from a good angle and then apply some leverage. See that? It comes right out in uh, pieces. Yeah. Insert foot in mouth. All right, well, part of it's out. Going back in. Oh, more of it's out. Getting fluid on me again. All right. It's just my day, isn't it? Yeah. They got me. There she goes. And I'm fluid soaked again. Hang on, let me go take a shower. I'll be right back. Okie dokes. We've got our new seal unpackaged. It's ready to go back in. It's a... Uh, ow. Oh no. That engine block's riding kind of close to it. And I had intended on using this socket as a seal driver. It's a rather large seal. But... It's a... Uh, I can't seem to get clearance for that socket here because there's an engine in the way. Hmm. Okay. Well, that makes this seal a different color, doesn't it? Uh oh, flashlight. I'm running out of lumen. Boy. And this is obviously going to be a uncomfortable situation here. I'm beginning to not enjoy this job. Just a little bit. I and mean, I'm gonna enjoy it when it's done. <laughs> yep, ate some more fluid. It's not how I wanted to conduct this. All right, Ford guys, what am I doing wrong here? What's the trick? Just uh, hammer it in, is that it? Try again until it works. Dead blow to the rescue. I have no other choice. See, and again, it's not seating over there. This, this isn't what our, I'm in a bad spot here, covered in trans fluid. Tools are covered in trans fluid. The trans is running out of fluid to be covered, to cover me in. And I've got this seal halfway in. Look at that, you see that? Let's try this. Ding, text message. Not right now, phone. 
I'm busy swimming in lubricant. Lots of it. Mm. It's entering my armpit. It's in the ar it's way in the armpit. Come on. Yeah. All right, I think I think it's seated now. That was that was annoying. The soft hammer saved the day. The dead blow could not have done that with a uh, with a non-dead blow hammer. I'm wondering if there's like a special tool to do this with because there's no way a seal driver can drive this seal because of the, the clearance issue right here. Very odd. Not uh, not easy, I, I didn't didn't see that coming. Anyway, the seal's in there. Let's go ahead and start uh, sending this axle back into its home. Pretty simple. Slide it in, give it a twist. And a tap -a -roo. Goes right in. All right, before we get out of here, I want to clean up all this nasty on this thing. We'll just give it a quick hose down, get all the red dribblies out of it, especially uh, taking care to clean off these engine mounts right here because they're covered in lubricant. And uh, petroleum products and uh, rubber do not mix well. So we're gonna get that petroleum off this rubber mount, get all the drippings off, that way when we go to inspect this later for leaks, we know uh, if it's good or if it's not. Okay, let's flip this around 180 and go ahead and put the, uh, the bracket back together for this axle. Okay, we'll put the bracket back up and then two nuts. One nut, dos nuts. I have a visitor. Wonder if it's my fuel pump for the doge click times two kicks okie dokes let's back out of here and go ahead and get this axle back in tighten down and then uh, we'll put the ball joint back together pull this guy back forward again <laughs> back forward and slip this uh axle shaft back into the bearing come on you there we go straighten her out some so comes through all the way, please. Now I can uh, get this ball joint back into its position. Come here, pry bar, get in there. Beautiful. All right, let's get our axle nut back on. Tighten this guy down. Torque that later. And we'll get the ball joint next. And where's that uh, powder pin hole? A little farther. There it is. Okie dokes, new pin coming through, maybe. There we go. Take this guy, we'll bend her around. Okay, that's good to go, nice and safe. Okay, we're good to go. I need to uh, add a couple quarts of trans fluid to this and set the uh, set the level next. All right, let's let this thing down a little bit. Transit coming down. We're gonna check the top side for a dipstick and a, and a fill hole. Uh, there may be plugs in the side of the train. There might be a dipstick. I, I do not know. But I'm going to find out. Let's see what we got here. Ah, oh, lucky. Lucky me. We've got a transmission dipstick. That makes my life easy. Much more easier. Oh, dipstick gravity. Starting the engine. Angry 
power steering. Oh, that's so bad. Hang on, we need to fill that up so this thing shuts up. Yeah, that's that's horrible. That's so bad. Quiet down, please. I find it odd though I couldn't figure out where that glue went to. As soon as all the bubbles uh, come out of solution on that, it'll shut up. Okay, now that we can hear ourselves think straight, let's check that trans fluid level again. What do we have here? Looks like, okay, yeah, now we're showing low. Okay, that's, that's better. Funnel action, there's gonna be no pouring things into that little hole, it's not gonna work. And that red funnel's not gonna work, so we're just gonna have to use the big, uh, big yellow funnel here. Okay, I don't have any Merc on five, so I have to use my BG bag in the box. This is the Primo level fluid. Really good color. I'm thinking I'll do, I think it's about two quarts is what I need. I'll pour some and then stop and check it. Go. Oh, I need to let that settle. The tube has a bunch of uh, fluid running down the side of it, and it's skewing my dipsticking test results. Look at that. Okay, we'll give this like five more minutes to settle out, and then we'll come back to it. Okay, attempt number two. Let's see if we can't get an accurate reading here. And the survey says, ah, oh, that looks good. It's stopping right here at the max mark at my finger. I'll give it a few more minutes and we'll recheck uh, one more time, I think. All righty, finalized fluid recheck real fast here. So we can lift this up and uh, check it for a leak. Level looks good. We're right here at the max mark. Okie dokes. Let's go ahead and raise this thing back up and we'll check it uh, for leaks at that shaft seal. I don't expect to find one, but you never know. Uh, moving back up. Okay, that looks good. Let's see what we got going on here. And we are dry. I see no redness. Very good. I will count that as a success. Now, naturally, I'll need to drive this and then do a recheck. Uh, I can do that later because I need to go ahead and move on and do that brake fluid exchange. Uh, however, uh, you're gonna have to wait until later for that one because I'm gonna make that a separate video because it's uh, the, the procedure is worthy of a video all on its own. So that being said, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you, in fact, did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in deferred transit.